Last year I applied and I submitted 16 primary applications, 15 secondary applications. I got 14 interview invites. I went on 13 interviews and I got 12 acceptances and a lot of scholarships. I'm actually on a full ride to medical school right now at NYU Grossman School of Medicine. Literally the best choice that I've ever made. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to go ahead and subscribe so that way you don't miss out when I share new videos. Today we are going to be diving into the personal statement. I am so excited to be sharing my personal statement and if you're considering applying to medical school, there's so many different things to think about because there are a lot of things that are included in your medical school application. Everything from activity section, demographics, of course you have to make a school list, your letters of recommendation, then you'll do an interview, all that good jazz. But I believe that the personal statement is one of the most important things. It is a narrative of why you want to go into medicine. And I think there's a lot of underlying questions, you know, when you start thinking about your personal statement, I always consider like, what was the initial spark, you know, like what initially interests you in healthcare? And then what specifically was it about medicine? So like becoming a physician rather than being a PI, a nurse, what aspects of medicine are you really drawn to? What do you envision your future looking like as a physician? That's so much, but those are just starting points. I highly recommend when you're about to write your personal statement, like just brain dump, literally brain dump any and everything you can think about and then go from there because I think the hardest thing is like getting it out you know I think it's so weird because when we grow up you know you're always taught like oh don't be cocky like make sure you be hum like you're humble and then for your medical school application like it's literally pages and pages of you hyping yourself up like I have my medical school application here and the PDF document is literally 19 pages. So I'm like, there's essentially 19 pages of hyping myself up. So like, it's weird to get into that mindset. But once you get into the mindset of like, I am amazing. I am destined to be a physician. I will be a great physician. Then you're set. So let's get into it. My eyes darted side to side, scanning the car line area for my older sister. We usually waited for our ride together, but today she was nowhere to be found. Michaela has diabetes, was the news I returned home to. At the age of six, I simply thought it meant her body stopped working and she had to get shots. Over the years, I had often helped my dad prep his insulin pens. However, at that moment, I wondered, will my body stop working too? A few years passed before I began to take ownership of my health. Nine-year-old me, finally able to stay home alone, raced towards the kitchen when my parents left. I grabbed the first blood sugar monitor I saw and pricked my finger. I took every chance to do so, only knowing that the magic number was less than 100. Internalizing the impact that diabetes had on me and my family kickstarted my interest in medicine. What began as a fear of developing diabetes led to a genuine curiosity to learn more. So I explored diabetes through a personal project in middle school. I chipped away at countless research articles, learning everything from the types of insulin and counting carbs to the ways to support individuals with diabetes, like my own family. That year concluded in me writing The Life of Liz, the journey of a teenage girl and how diabetes affected her life and relationships. It was a book that not many read, but one that allowed me to explore the illness that plagued my family and learn how to be proactive about my health and the health of my future patients. Without my familial exposure, I likely would not have taken the initiative to learn more about diabetes, nor had the knowledge to help myself and my family. As I realized how many people may lack health education, I wondered how that affects their experience with the healthcare system. With a newfound interest to learn how physicians incorporate education into patient care, I started shadowing at a free clinic. One day, I stood in the clinic's small room, barren navy walls, white towel floors, a computer, and an examination table. I was observing a follow-up appointment for a non-English speaking patient, Jane. They did not offer translation services, but the receptionist spoke Spanish and frequently assisted. After the discussion, the receptionist left, but the resident then decided to do a physical exam. As he began examining her, I watched the fear grow in Jane's eyes because she did not understand what was occurring. Levante su brazo, respire profundo. Raise your arm, take a deep breath. I did not realize what I was doing until the words left my mouth. 
I wanted to help her feel less alone in a room where everyone was speaking a foreign language. I had learned Spanish terminology on a medical mission trip to Costa Rica. I used the tools I gained during that global experience to help her feel safe, seen, and understood. Sometimes that is all it takes to make a difference. This experience solidified my commitment to medicine. I left the free clinic with many takeaways. How patients can be fearful even with well-intentioned doctors treating them. How language and culture impact healthcare experiences and how every patient should receive quality and culturally competent care. Fast forward a few months, I was shadowing a fellow in the emergency department overnight as a trauma case rushed through the doors. I was pushed further and further out of the room as the nurses and fellow ran in to save the coding patient. The attending, Dr. M, ran in from another case as the patient's vitals stabilized. So we moved to the intensive care unit. He saw me tensely watching from the corner and said, if the gut's dead, she's dead. My heartbeat quickened as I watched the bedside laparotomy, but I was relieved when the gut was alive. Then I heard the dreaded beep. Pushed against the wall, all I wanted to do was rush in and help. I yearned to know enough to speak up and suggest steps to save her. I wanted to know the patient's history and I wondered if the outcome would have been different if she had gotten her abdominal pain checked sooner. This experience deepened my motivation to understand the role that public health plays in the outcome of patients. Although I was not expecting to witness death firsthand, my desire to do more than stand in the corner and watch only strengthened that night. I want to be the attending physician, leading the team, working tirelessly to save patients. There was no single moment that when I decided that I wanted to be a physician. Instead, it was the culmination of my personal and healthcare experiences that have been a constant reminder of my goal, to be the physician that cares for everyone, regardless of their culture, language, or health literacy. I've learned humility, Spanish conversational skills, and the importance of developing cultural competence, all of which I plan to use in my future career. As a young girl, I lived in constant fear, wondering when diabetes would take over my life. Throughout medical school and beyond, I hope to develop the tools I need to advocate for and educate my patients so they never have to experience that fear. Most of all, I plan to provide high quality, culturally competent care for all. Wow. That's like crazy because I, it's been a while since I read my personal statement. Um, I did like a series of you know, application prep webinars with another first year medical student last year. And we shared this during one of the webinars, but I really think that's the last time that I read that. And that was in like March, April of last year. Uh, I think it's always bittersweet to go back and read my personal statement. It's just so many emotions. Um, this was like draft, like 15, like I started writing my personal statement in September 2021 and like finished in April or May of 2022 when I applied. And I think that just goes to show that like the first draft you write, it's probably not going to be the best draft. It's probably not going to be the draft that you submit to medical schools. Like it takes a lot to really dig deep, like reflect on experiences that have shaped you into the person that you are and the you know that have shaped your desire to become a future physician but also like not just to reflect but like go back into those moments and really like relive them and evoke those emotions that you felt and convey that um and i think that's something that's really really difficult to do and you know I'm not saying that my personal statement is perfect. It's far from perfect. If I could go back and rewrite it now, I probably would change some things. Um, but I think that when I was writing my personal statement, it was just great to see other, see and hear other examples and just see how other people approach it. And one of the things that I love is, you know, looking at the personal statements of students that were accepted alongside me, our personal statements were all so different. There's literally no si one size fits all. So I don't want you to think like, oh, I need to do this, 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 and I put this, this, and this into my personal statement that I'll get an acceptance. I don't think it's about that at all. I think it's really just about conveying who you are as a person and why you want to be a physician. So, you know, for me, I think that my interest in public health was huge. My interest in being able to communicate with all of my patients was huge. And that was reflected in the schools that I really wanted to go to. Like this summer, I'm planning to do public health research. I applied to schools that had MPHs and 
I, one of the reasons I really picked NYU is because I'm in New York City. Like the diversity that I get here is unmatched compared to what I could get with any other patient population. And then also just like the Spanish opportunities that we have within the school itself is amazing. Um, then like outside of my goals as a future physician, just like figuring out like what really drew me to medicine. And I think it was just my family's experiences early on. Like my sister has type one diabetes. My dad has type two diabetes. I know my um, paternal grandmother and a lot of her siblings had diabetes. And so that was just something that like, I remember from my earliest memories, you know? And so that was really like, what's going on? And then my, like my mom also being a nurse. So like she was always giving everybody their shots and like taking care of everyone and just watching her. But it's more than just like, okay, you were exposed to medicine, you know, a lot of people have loss in their lives. A lot of people have experiences with the healthcare system, but it's all about what you got from that experience and how that experience turned into a desire to pursue medicine. And so that's kind of how I shifted my personal statement. Like, yeah, this is, you know, like this is how I was exposed, but then I decided to take it upon myself to write a book and do all this research and then I you know like I kept getting drawn into medicine I absolutely love it and so then as I was drawn in I was like you know what I need to go and explore more and so that's how I started shadowing and volunteering and things like that I think it's also important to realize that you won't be able to include every single thing that you've done in your medical school personal statement like I was 13 years old and I was volunteering at my local hospital and that was definitely an experience that helped me decide that I wanted to pursue medicine. But I don't like if I had to rank the experiences, like it was maybe like six or seven. So it just didn't make it into my personal statement. So I think, you know, there's a lot of different drafts where you'll try different things, figure out what works and then figure out like what your story is. So that was a lot. Um, there are so many different resources. I will drop um, some resources, webinars, all that good jazz that I have created for students as they are working on their personal statement. And then I will also drop some links to resources um, from other medical students, physicians, like mentors, just things that I also use when I was applying to medical school or that I've looked at and I really trust and believe in because you know, like you can never have too many resources, right? <laughs> but seriously, um, I know that everyone approaches this differently and I want everyone to have access to the resources that they need. So I just wanna share an abundance in the comments below so you guys can look at those. And if you want to see more about my medical school application, see other students' medical school applications, like you just let me know what would be helpful for you. Please make a comment and then don't forget to like this video so I know that you found it helpful and subscribe to my channel. Good luck whenever you apply to medical school. I am rooting for you and thank you for supporting my journey.